Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Izuku and Najire were childhood friend, Deku x Najire, part 1. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Henry HPS, link is in the description, also subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's begin the video. In this world about 80% of the planet population have some sort of unique ability, a quirk, as people call it, a power that differentiates a person from another one, some can breathe fire, others can fly, there are so many different types of quirks that is virtually impossible to name every single one, but there are some exceptions. His name is Izuku Midoriya, a boy with green hair, green eyes, and freckled cheeks, he is part of the 20% that doesn't have a special power, he's quirkless. He carried this hard truth since he was 5 years old, when he and his mother went to the doctor to find out if he would develop a power or not and, thanks to an extra joint on his pinky finger, he'll never have one. This changed everything in his life, before he had friends, he was happy he had a dream. His entire life he wished to become a hero, a person that put his life on the line to protect others, he wanted to be like his idol, he wanted to be like All Might, the no point one hero, but how can a normal person stop someone with a quirk? After that visit to the doctor, everything he had was broken into pieces right before his eyes, but even if all odds were against him. He kept moving forward. Even if it was broken into pieces, he carried this shattered dream with him and never let it go, even if this dream was impossible, he at least had to try, and his life would change once again when he met a special hero. But our story doesn't start here. It starts a long time ago, when Izuku was 7 years old, he and his friends were in a nearby woods, in front of a fence that blocked the entrance to a restricted area of the place. All of the kids, except for Izuku, were happy and excited to cross the fence and invade the area. Come on, let's hunt some bad guys. Yelled a blonde with spiky hair named Katsuki Bakugu, the leader of the group and terror of Izuku's childhood. Izuku and Katsuki were neighbors and childhood friends, they hung out together since they were three years old to the point where they were almost inseparable, until Katsuki's quirk manifested. The blonde sweated a liquid similar to nitroglycerin from his hand and could detonate it at will to release powerful explosions, it was a very strong quirk to say the least. Thanks to this amazing power and the constant praises he received because of it, he began to change. The sweet and caring kid became arrogant and prideful, treated anyone he deemed weaker than him like trash, and once he discovered that his best friend was quirkless, things only got worse. He started to bully the green-haired kid, started to call him names, and even created a nickname. Deku, the useless, and he never stopped. But even with the constant beat-ups and the insults that he threw at him, Azuku always trailed behind him. No one knew why, but no matter what Katsuki did, the freckled boy would always follow him in his adventures. As the blonde called everyone followed him into the prohibited zone with Izuku right behind them. Once they crossed the fence the group of kids encountered a small adder that leads to the banks of a river and a large fallen log connecting both sides of the passage. Follow my lead. Katsuki said as he walked through the passage standing on top of the log. Doing as the blonde said, the group followed his movements and started to cross as they were halfway through it, everyone gasped seeing the explosive kid slip and fall on the river. Hakan, are you alright? yelled a chubby boy with a pair of red wings on his back. Don't worry, I'm okay, Katsuki replied as he got up and massaged the back of his head. Come on, let's key he said as he was interrupted by a hand that was extended towards him. Are you okay? Izuku said as he offered a hand to the blonde. It could be bad if you hit your head. That moment surprised everyone watching the scene as Izuku tried to help the person that made his life a living hell, but as the green-haired offered help with kindness in his eyes, Katsuki grew angrier at the gesture. Oh way Deku, I don't need your help. Katsuki shouted as he slapped Izuku's hand creating an explosion in the process and making the freckled kid fall on his back. Let's keep moving. He shouted once again as he climbed the ladder and left Izuku behind. Following the explosive kid orders, the group started moving forward, leaving the green-haired man alone in the river as he got up and rubbed his hand trying to make the pain go away. Once he stood on his feet he climbed the ladder and saw no one around and started to worry. Oh no, they left me behind, I need to catch up. He said to himself as he followed the path, but no matter how much he walked, he couldn't find the group of boys that had left him behind. Seeing that no one was around, he started to think. Maybe they left the trail and entered the woods he thought as he looked around once more trying to find one of his friends. I won't know if I just stay here. As he collected his thoughts, he turned to his right and entered the woods, hoping to find and rejoin the group of mini explorers. While he walked around, he found himself in front of a ditch, it was a lot bigger than the ladder by the river, to the point where it was kind of hard to see the bottom of it. Once he finished observing the fall and turned around to continue his search he heard something coming from it. Someone, help. 
A feminine voice yelled from the bottom of the ditch, it appeared to be in pain because of something, but he didn't know why. He then turned and looked into the ditch again, this time paying more attention. Looking carefully into the darkness, he noticed a small silhouette in the bottom of the hole, once he connected the dots and understood what happened he took action. Hello, are you alright? Izuku yelled. Yeah, I'm alright, but I can't walk, I fell here and sprained my ankle, can you help me? The voice answered, happy that someone appeared. Don't worry, I'll see what I can do. He yelled, looking around trying to find a way to help the person in need. As he searched for something that could help him in his situation, he found a small rocky path that led to the bottom of the ditch, happy with his discovery, he yelled to the person. I found a way to go down, wait for me. Okay. The person answered. After receiving the confirmation, he started to come down the ditch with careful steps, and with each one, he noticed how deep this ditch really was, and that made him wonder, how did she manage to survive this fall? Maybe it is because of her quirk. Once he reached the bottom of the hole he saw, in the distance, a girl sitting down, massaging her feet with a painful expression in her face, it must be her. He thought, as he ran toward her, as fast as he could and, once he was right in front of her he looked at her calmly, she seemed to be a bit taller than him, had sky blue hair that reached her waist, eyes of the same color, she was wearing blue overalls with a purple shirt underneath and white shoes, but, as he paid more attention to the girl. He noticed that her right feet was indeed sprained by the red tone that it had. Are you the person from earlier? The bluenet asked. Yes, I am. My name is Izuku Midoriya. He answered, as he came closer to take a look at her foot. My name is Najire, Najire Hado. She answered, as a small smile formed in her face. The green-haired boy approached and knelt down so he could observe the wound, it didn't seem to be so bad, but if she said that she couldn't walk because of it, he would believe her. This hole is really deep, how did you survive the fall with only a sprained ankle? He questioned her, trying to understand how everything happened. I use my quirk to ease the fall, you see, I can use my energy to release shockwaves, but, as you can notice, it didn't save me completely. She answered while massaging her foot once again. But what were you doing here by yourself? Izuku asked. I normally come to these woods and explore a little bit, but today I found an area I had never seen before, and while I was looking around I found this ditch. I came closer to look at it, but the ground collapsed, and I fell here. She explained herself trying not to get embarrassed from her mistake. For how long have you been stuck here? The boy asked, as he worried about her. I don't know, maybe 20 minutes later she answered, being a bit curious herself. Then let's get you out of here before someone gets worried. The boy said, as he got up and extended his hand towards her. She gladly accepted the offer and, with his help, stood on her feet while holding herself on the boy's shoulder. Even with a difference of heights, he seemed to be able to carry her with no apparent difficulties. As now both of them were standing up, she looked at him and asked. How are we getting out of here? There is a small path right around the corner, I can carry you to the top if we go there, he said, as he pointed to the path he used to get to the bottom of the ditch. But is it safe to do this? She questioned, as she seemed to be a little worried about the idea. Don't worry, the path is sturdy enough, we can go through it easily. He answered while forming a small smile on his face. Okay then I trust you. She agreed. And with that, Izuku carried Najire to the top of the hole and back to safety. It was a bit harder to do because of the extra weight, but he didn't care, he would help this girl even if it was the last thing he would do. Once they were out of the hole, they distanced themselves from the ditch and sat in a nearby rock to relax a little before they began to walk out of the wood and look for more qualified help. As they both sighed in relief she turned to him and began to talk. Thank you for taking me out of there. She thanked him for his act of kindness and bowed toward him. There is no need to thank me, I did what anyone would do. He answered while scratching the back of his head in embarrassment. But even so, you were the one that helped me, and I can't thank you enough for what you did, but, if it is not too much, may I ask you a question? Sure, ask me anything. He replied. How did you find me? She asked. Oh, I was exploring with my friends too, but I got lost, I was looking for them until I found you. The boy was caught off guard with that question, but answered her anyway. I see, but do you know where they are now? No, they're probably deeper in the woods searching for adventures. He answered and lowered his head, feeling a little sad. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you sad. She apologized as she saw the boy's reaction. No, it's fine, it's not like they care anyway. He said, wiping the sad look out of his face and replacing it with a smile, standing up and offering his hand. Come on, your ankle isn't going to treat itself. The girl took a moment but, once again, accepted his offer happily and clung to the boy's shoulder. They looked at each other and nodded, taking a step forward and walking their way out of the deep woods. 
the air between them was a little tense, as both of them were concentrated on getting out of there, but once they managed to get back onto the main trail, Najire decided to break the ice. So what do you want to be? She asked, not knowing how to properly start the conversation. What do you mean? He asked her, confused by the question. What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, that's easy, I want to be a cool hero, just like All Might. Izuku exclaimed, lifting his fist up in the air. Really? That's so cool. I'm sure you'll be a great hero once you grow up. Do you think so? But of course. After all, you just saved me. She said with a bright smile on her face. The boy didn't know how to react to this. Aside from his mother, no one had ever shown this type of affection to him, it was just heartwarming. So, if you want to be a hero you must have a very cool quirk don't you? Could you show it to me? Najira asked excitedly. Their words hit Izuku like a truck. He didn't have a quirk, what was he going to say, he was starting to get desperate, he needed to answer the girl quickly. It's not like that he said letting his nervousness get the best of him. What do you mean it's not like that, we're friends right, you can tell me, I'm not gonna judge. She said, getting even more excited. Friend, that is a word Izuku hadn't heard in a long time. Someone he just met wanted to be friends with him. He didn't know how to react, should he be happy, should he be nervous, he didn't know at that moment, all he did was let his tongue run loose. I'm quirkless. He had said it. What the blue net froze hearing his word, she had never seen this before, a person that didn't have a quirk of its own, she didn't know how to do, she didn't know what to say, all she could do was stand there and stare at the poor boy and imagine all that he had gone through because of that. I discovered this two years ago, and because I'm quirkless, no one wants to play with me, no one ever believes in me, no one ever wants to be my friend, and the boys in my class hit me. Because I'm quirkless I'm always alone, I can never do anything right, but, even so, I want to become a hero, I want to become someone that can save anyone with a bright smile on his face. Do you really think I can become a hero? And there he was, he had told her the truth, he didn't know why he did it, but it all just came out, he couldn't hold back those words anymore, they hurt too much. At this point, both were just standing in the middle of the trail, waiting for one of them to say something. Izuku was just staring at the ground, trying to gather enough courage to keep going, but his attempt was interrupted by a sob. He turned to the girl and was surprised by what he saw. The girl was crying her eyes out, her tears were flowing down her cheeks, and her smile was now all wobbly as she looked at the green-haired kid, trying to speak in between sobs. Yes. Yes you can. She said with difficulty while trying to make a straight face. She just couldn't believe this, this sweet boy had gone through so much and never gave up, never turned back, even with all odds against him, he kept moving forward and followed his conviction. This story had really touched her. She didn't even care anymore, she just wanted to help the freckled kid, she wanted to make him happy, no matter what. As she moved, she wrapped her arms around the green-haired child and pulled him into a tight hug. Izuku was stunned by her act of affection, he couldn't understand. All people that discovered about him being quirkless always distanced themselves from him, but this girl did the opposite, she wanted to get closer, he did not understand, all he did was accept the hug and cry on her shoulder. The two stayed like this for a while, letting all the tears fall and tightening the hug they gave each other. When they ran out of breath, they separated from the tight embrace and looked at each other's faces, red and swollen eyes, humid cheeks and wobbly smiles was all they saw. After a brief moment of staring, a soft laugh came from Najire, followed by Izuku laughing, as well, there was no more tension between them. We should probably get going, our parents must be worried. Izuku started as he supported the blue net on his shoulders once again. Are you ready? He asked her with a proper smile on his face this time. Whenever you are. She replied. And so they began to walk once again, with a smile on their faces the whole time. It took a while, but they managed to get out of the woods and, as they reached the city, found the girl's parents looking for her in the entrance of the forest. Once the two adults noticed their presence, they rushed towards the kids. The gyre. The parents yelled in unison. Once they were close enough Izuku let go of the girl and watched as she was hugged by her worried parents, they seemed so happy together that he did not interrupt the scene and just observed. I'm so glad you're okay, we were worried sick. The father said, as he wrapped his arm around the girl and rubbed the back of her head. Please, tell us what happened. The mother said, as she got closer and hugged her daughter too. I was exploring the woods like I usually do when I fell into a ditch and hurt my foot. If it wasn't for this boy I would still be there. She said, as she pointed toward Izuku. The parents calmed down a little and looked at the boy. The father suddenly left the girl with her mother, who held the girl in her arms and approached the freckled kid with a serious aura around him. What is your name kid? He asked. Izuku, Izuku Midoriya. He answered being a little scared by the man's tone. 
without any hesitation, the adult got on his knees and bowed before the child with his forehead now touching the ground. Thank you Izuku. Thank you for saving my daughter. He said, as the seriousness was replaced with pure happiness and gratitude. Izuku was a bit surprised by the man's action and looked to the women in front of him, Najair was giggling, seeing her father bow like that, and her mother only held a soft smile on her lips. With a bit of hesitation, he approached the man and touched his shoulder. There is no need to thank me, I only did what I thought was right. The green-haired man said as the man stood up and looked at him with a warm smile on his face. And for that we can't thank you enough kid, we own you one. He replied as he went back to his wife and grabbed Najair to hold her in his arms. Say Izuku, would you like it if we took you home? It's the least we can do to thank you. The mother asked as she looked at the boy. Izuku was surprised once again, he had never met them before, was this really a good idea? He then looked at Najair one last time, she just smiled at him, practically begging with her eyes that he accepted the offer. The green-haired took a deep breath and said. It would be great. With his confirmation they guided Izuku towards the family car and let him sit on the back with Najair by his side. Once everyone was ready, they hit the road back to the city. The boy was a little tense, he never had been with them, especially in their car. Even if he trusted Najair, he couldn't help but get a little worried. As he gave directions to the man at the wheel, he felt a little pat on his shoulder, he turned around and saw the blue net gesturing for him to get closer, after he had answered the request, the girl approached and gave him a small kiss on the cheek. The boy just looked at her, completely stunned, his cheeks were turning into a shade of red no one had ever seen before, as he stuttered with every attempt to speak, the girl however, just stared at him with a big smile on her face and a slight blush on her cheeks. Thank you for helping me. She said, as her smile got even bigger and prettier. You're welcome. Izuku said, trying to recompose himself. The pair of adults could only watch through the rearview mirror and smile at the scene. Ah young love, this does bring back some memories. The father said, keeping his eyes on the road. The mother replied, looking at the road as well. And so the day had come to an end, Izuku was brought home safely and back into his mother's arms, who apparently was about to call the police. The group of parents had exchanged numbers in order to keep in contact, and Najira was taken to the hospital to get her foot treated, but all this time, the only thing Izuku could think of was. I was kissed by a girl. After a couple of days, the families had decided to visit the local park in order to see each other again, and so reuniting the pair of kid one more time, but this time around, Najair wasn't so cheerful. What, you're moving away? Izuku said, caught off guard with the news. Yeah we are, my parents found a cheaper apartment for us, but it is far away from here, so we won't be able to see each other again. She replied, getting sad with the news herself. That's so sad, we just met and have to be separated. It's not so bad, my mother said there are lots of cool places to visit, and since it is cheaper we'll be able to do a lot more than we could here. Najair said with a small smile on her lips. But that means we won't be able to see each other, even if it is for the better, it makes me a little sad. The boy exclaimed, staring at the ground. The blue net stopped for a moment and started thinking, she was the only friend he had, and she already had to leave him behind, she really didn't want to, but it was necessary. What could she do to make him happy? With hundreds of ideas crossing her mind, she finally decided. How about we make a promise then? What do you mean? Izuku asked. You said you wanted to be a hero, didn't you? Yes, I want to be just like All Might. Then how about we promise this? Once we both become cool heroes, we find each other and start working together. What do you say? She said as she extended her pinky finger toward him. Wait, you want to be a hero too? Izuku asked, confused by the girl's proposal. But of course, I want to be just like my hero. The blue net answered with the biggest smile she could make. The green haired stopped and thought a little, the journey to become a hero is not so easy, it would take years before they could keep this promise, was this really a good idea? He looked at her one more time and saw Najair, with her pinky still pointed toward him and one of the softest smiles he had ever seen, waiting for his answer so, without hesitation, he interlaced his pinky with hers and said. It's a promise, once we become cool heroes, we will meet each other once again. Then it's done. She said, as she pulled him into a tight hug, so tight that Izuku was having a hard time breathing. After a moment, they separated from the embrace and stared at each other, both blushing lightly, but their happiness had completely covered their embarrassment until they were interrupted by a deep voice calling them. Najair and Izuku, get back here, we're going back home. Najair's father called them as he waved with the pair of mothers right behind him. Let's go. The blue net asked the shy boy. Sure, let's get back. He replied as both of them run toward their families. 
and with that they parted ways. One week later the Hado family had moved to a far place, and Izuku was left alone once again. But this time he had a promise to keep, he would give his hardest to become a hero everyone would respect, so one day, they could meet each other again. With time, his memories were getting blurrier, it was hard for him to remember how the girl looked like, all he could remember was the pretty color of her hair, and that memory he would never let go. The years flied before his eyes, and the world wasn't holding back, always trying to make him give up and search for another dream, but he kept going, no matter how hard the world hit him, he would always get up and keep following his dream, quirkless or not, he would keep his promise, and nothing was going to stop him, even when his own idol told him to stop he kept going, and now we are here. Izuku was now 14 years old and was lying on his knees with Tiri as he stood in front of the no.1 hero, his idol, All Might, who had offered him something people would kill to have. So, what do you say, will you inherit my quirk? All Might said, staring at the team with determined eyes. Yes I accept. The quick answer. I expected nothing less. And so, his first step on the journey to become a hero was taken. A lot of time has passed since Izuku met All Might and started training with him in order to inherit his quirk, the one for all. It was a complete hell for the poor hero wannabe. He was assigned to clean the Dagaba Municipal Beach Park in a time span of 10 months, in order to participate in UA's entrance exam, he had to move fridges, carry tires, and microwaves, he even moved a car once, but in the end all the effort was worth it. Izuku not only cleaned the entire beach, but also managed to do it in time to take the exam. He can still remember the moment All Might gave him his power. Beat this. The no.1 hero said, as he gave the boy a stand of his hair. What Izuku was shocked with was what All Might told him to do. Why do I have to eat his hair? Is this how the quirk is passed? The boy though while wearing a blank expression. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as you take my DNA. Now hurry and eat my hair. All Might said, as he now shoved the strand in the boy's mouth. Wait a moment, please. The green-haired said being a little scared by the hero's vast change of attitude. It took a while, but Izuku managed to swallow the piece of hair. He could feel the strand go down his throat and wished he could just vomit it out of him, but he had to do it or else all the training he did would have gone to a waste and the idea of having to try again was enough to make him swallow it as if it was the most delicious thing Earth had ever seen. Did you eat it? The hero asked, curious if the kid did, as asked. Yeah I did. He replied, trying to hold back the urge to puke. Good. But I don't feel any different, is it really going to work? Izuku asked. He really didn't feel like the power had entered in his system, he still felt like the plain quirkless boy he always was. Of course it is going to work, but it is not instantaneous, how do you think your stomach works in the first place? But do not panic kid, one for all will have entered your body by the time you're doing the exam. All Might said, as he approached the new successor, as he knelt before him and placed a hand on his shoulder. Now listen carefully young Midoriya, we may have turned you into a proper vessel, but we did it in a hurry. You're not used to use this power so expect some real kickbacks once you use it. Izuku just nodded in approval, as All Might spoke seriously. Whatever he's talking about, it must really hurt thought the now buff teen while he zipped his jacket. Now hurry, you don't want to be late for the entrance exam, do you the no.1 hero said, as he got up and changed into his true form. Yes sir. Just thinking about it gives me shivers. The boy said while he walked towards the building. I wonder what type of kickbacks was All Might was talking about. Izuku had been thinking about it all morning, what would happen when he finally used one for all. The doubt on its own was already consuming him. But right now, he didn't have time to think about it, he had to focus. Get out of my way Deku or I'll kill you. Katsuki shouted, catching the introvert off guard. Hey Kaken, let's do our best our best today, all right. The green-haired teen said, as he shook his arms in front of him. But, to his surprise, Katsuki just passed by him, no more insults, no beat-ups, nothing. Is this because of the sludge villain? He wondered. After the awkward moment, he recompassed himself and restarted his walk toward the building. This is my first step to fulfill my promise and become a great hero. He tripped while thinking of it. Why did I open my big mouth? As Izuku prepared himself for damage of the fall, he was surprised when he noticed he did not hit the floor, in fact, he was floating right now. Are you alright? He heard a sweet voice talk to him. When he looked to his left, he saw this pretty girl with shoulder-length brown hair, big brown eyes, and rosy cheeks, standing right beside him, she was touching his backpack and proceeded to put him back on the floor before she touched her fingertips. I'm sorry, I used my quirk without asking, she said smiling. It would be bad luck if you fell, right? He didn't know what to say right now, all he could do was to grumble. Well I gotta go, see ya. She exclaimed, waving while leaving him behind. Izuku was now standing still in the middle of the way, shaking and looking where the girl was standing. 
He looked toward the building with a very awkward face and thought. I talked to a girl. Even if he hadn't said a word. After the written test and a couple minutes of explanation on how the practical exam would work, all competitors were now in front of a massive gate, waiting for the exam to start. Izuku was in the middle of the crowd, recapping the rules and what he should do once he entered the fake city. Okay, I just got to destroy as many robots as possible to gather enough points to pass, easy right? After a brief moment of deep though, all Izuku could do was begin to sweat and yell inside his mind. How the hell am I going to do that? He was extremely nervous about it, as All Might had said, he had just inherited one for all, and had no experience on using it, all those videos of the no point one hero in action, are nothing compared to being there, and doing it, not only that he had no experience with his quirk, but he also had no combat practice whatsoever, he knew how to throw punches. But would that be enough to take down a large number of robots, even with his new power? He looked around at the people he was going against, there were people with wings, tails, giant arms, etc., but all had one thing in common. They all seemed more prepared for the exam than him. I just hope that I'm not placed with the guy with glasses. He thought to himself. Just thinking about the guy gave him shivers, that boy seemed to be really intense, not just by his formal way of speaking, but from the aura he emanated as well, he had scared Izuku down to the bone. While looking through the crowd, he spotted the same pretty girl from before. With shaking legs, he started to walk towards her. I should thank her for what she did earlier. Before he could reach the girl and thank her for the act of kindness, he felt a strong hand grabbing his shoulder that turned around to see who wanted his attention, and for his disbelief, it was the same teen with glasses he wished he hadn't been paired with, he has combed bluish black hair, eye with the same color of his hair, and rectangular blue glasses. Why are you here? Hopping to interfere. He said with a glare that seemed to pierce through Izuku's soul. You're here too. The green-haired exclaimed. That girl right there seems to be trying to concentrate, do you want to interrupt her so she isn't focused for the exam? The teen said with a serious tone. No, that's not why. Hey, isn't that kid the one who was acting like an idiot in the front gate? An examinee said, interrupting Izuku. I guess that's one less rival to worry about, another person said, Izuku didn't know who it was though. Izuku's self-esteem was already brought to the floor with these few sentences, as they had already disregarded him from the competition, and he swore that heard a big part of the crowd say. We're so lucky. It would be a bad day for him, wouldn't it? But, before he could start complaining about his life in his mind, he heard a very powerful shout coming from the top of a nearby building. And start. Every contestant looked to the top of the building and saw present Mick, the same hero who had told them the rules, announcing the beginning of the test. What, did you expect a countdown or something? Come on, the exam has already started. He shouted again, pointing to the city. The green-haired recompassed himself and looked at the main gate. This is it. He thought as he watched everyone run into the city, leaving him eating dust. I'm already behind. He yelled in his mind while entering the city as fast as he could. While venturing through the city, Izuku remembered all the words All Might had said to him. When you use one for all, clench your butt cheeks and let your heart cry out, saying SM. Before he could remember the whole phrase he was interrupted by a giant green robot with a number one painted in its right arm, bursting through the wall of a building. It's a one-pointer. Izuku said, startled by the robot's sudden appearance. Target locked. Prepare for termination. The faux villain said, as he marked and rushed towards the teen. He tried moving out of the way, but his shaky legs wouldn't allow him. Holy heck, I'm going to die. The freckled teen covered his eyes, hoping for the best to happen. As the robot prepared to attack him, a shiny blue laser pierced through the bot's chest, destroying it. Izuku looked around and saw a blonde boy holding his hand behind his head as the belt in his waist steamed from the blast it had just released. We make a great team, you serving as bait, and I get the point he said while running towards another robot. But I don't think we'll be able to do that again, adieu. Six minutes and two seconds remaining. Izuku heard present Mick shout from the top of the same building. Oh no, I'm running out of time. The green-haired thought as he turned around a nearby corner. When he entered the new area, he was stunned by what he saw. Pure and utter destruction. Robots were being crushed all over the place, explosions could be heard from miles away, while the contestants fought against the false villains. As he looked at the scenario in front of him he saw the pretty girl from before touching as many robots as she could, making them float high in the sky, before clapping her hands together, making them fall for their doom. Okay, that should be 29 points. She said, completely exhausted from the overuse of her quirk. 29 points. But how did he wondered before he heard an explosion coming from his left? He turned around and saw the boy with glasses kicking a two-pointer in the head, destroying it completely, he then shouted. Okay, that's 45. 
35 what did he get so many? Izuku asked himself. Every other contestant around him was shouting similar numbers while the robots were being destroyed. The boy didn't know what to do, there weren't many bots left, and he didn't even know if he could bring them down, he needed to do something, and he needed to do it now. He rushed toward a one-pointer standing in the middle of the battlefield, but, before he could do anything else, a very loud sound came from a nearby building. He looked at the origin of it, and froze. A robot bigger than all buildings of the fake city with a big zero on its face, crushed everything in its path, while getting closer to the group of contestants. That's the zero-pointer. Izuku thought, as the machine attacked them, causing a massive blast of wind and dust to hit the teenagers. Most of them managed to get away unharmed, while all the robots in that battlefield were sent far away. Isn't that a little too much Izuku yelled inside his mind, as he tried to get up and ran away from the metallic beast, but his shaky body was not letting him get up. All other contestants were running for their lives, leaving everything behind with Izuku included. The robot kept coming closer, shaking the ground, as he did. Get up. Get up. Get up. I have to run. I'm still stuck at zero points, I have to run. Izuku shouted as he tried to stand on his legs, but it was of no use, he was too afraid to do so. Now he heard a grunt of pain coming from behind him. Izuku just stopped moving when he heard that sound, even knowing that the robot wasn't going to stop, he froze in place and slowly turned around and saw the pretty girl far away, with one of her legs stuck in a pile of debris the robot created, struggling as she tried to run for her life. The metallic beast got closer to her every second, and Izuku stood there with two phrases said by two different voices roaming endlessly in his mind. You said you wanted to be a hero, didn't you? It would be bad luck if you fell, right? With all his strength, Izuku got up and charged at the zero pointer. He didn't know why, maybe it was the adrenaline or the idea of the girl getting crushed, but in that moment, he just let his body take him. While he rushed toward the metallic beast, he felt a surge of power run through his legs and jumped with all he had, shooting high in the sky, now in face to face with a machine, as the power he felt before was now circulating in his arm, he clenched his fist and remembered those words. When you use one for all, clench your butt cheeks and let your heart cry out, saying. Smash. With all his might, he punched the machine right in the middle of its face, creating a dent and sending it flying toward the edge of the fake city, breaking everything in the way. His knuckles were completely busted as he hovered in the air while everyone in the ground just gasped with the sheer power he had demonstrated. So this is it, this is one for all. He exclaimed in his mind thinking of how amazing this power really was. And like all things affected by gravity, he started to fall very quickly, but what surprised him the most was the state his limbs were. His arm and his legs were completely broken, their skin was red like blood and were moving in unnatural ways, and the pain was unbearable. While he now reached high speeds, his eyes rolled to the back of his head as he passed out due to the pain. He was falling for his doom, and he wouldn't even know about it. Meters away from the ground and close to his death, he received a powerful slap from the girl he had just saved and began to float. She was on top of a broken robot that was also floating as she struggled to clap her hands together. Release. She said with difficulty as her hands connected, releasing her quirk and making both the robot she was on top of and Izuku fall to the ground safely. Once on the ground, the girl began to vomit, saying goodbye to her breakfast. After she finished throwing up, she looked at the green-haired teen and saw the state his limbs were. Is his quirk the cause of this? She asked herself while she came down from the broken machine and got closer to the boy who was now laying on his back. Time's up. Present Mick shouted, announcing the end of the exam from the top of the building. As the exam was finally brought into a close, all examinees gathered around the broken teen, curious about what they had witnessed. What was that? Someone asked. He must have a strength-enhancing quirk, but that was something else. Another examinee exclaimed. But with a quirk like that, how'd this kid get to be such a scaredy cat? Another one asked. Was it all just an act to throw us off? And see it helping him though. While the contestants discussed what had just happened, the teen with glasses analyzed everything from afar, but, oddly enough, his line of thought was very different from everyone else's. That's not it. Weren't they even watching? He asked himself. He jumped in to save that girl. The remaining time, his own safety, what he needed to pass, there was a lot to consider, but he did it without hesitation. I mean, if this weren't an exam I would have done the same. He yelled in his mind, doubting his own decisions a little. Wait, the exam could it be? He questioned. Well done everyone, well done. His thoughts were interrupted as he turned around and saw a small elderly woman walking through the crowd and giving candy to some contestants nearby. The woman was apparently in her hair uniform, which consisted of a white coat that reached the floor with a pink dress underneath, a white mask with a pink visor, and a syringe-shaped cane. 
Once through the mass of teenagers, the old heroine stood in front of the unconscious boy and brunette right beside him. Oh my, did your own quirk do this to you? He asked herself, looking down at the teen. Almost, as though your body isn't used to it. The elderly leaned down and kissed the boy's forehead with her extended lips. In the same moment her lips touched him, his broken limbs shone in a green color as they reverted to their normal appearance with no wounds remaining. Everyone's jaw dropped watching the scene until one examinee exclaimed. She can heal such serious wounds with a kiss. But of course. Said the blonde teen who stole one of Izuku's points. That mademoiselle is the backbone of UA and the reason why they are allowed to take such dangerous tests. Once all of his injuries were healed, the youthful heroine turned around and asked. Anyone need medical assistance? As a couple of hands were raised, the heroine entered the crowd once again, leaving the pair of teenagers alone. With everything back to normal, Izuku's eyes slowly opened and were met with the brightness of the sun and a feminine silhouette staring at him with worried eyes. It took a moment, but all recent memories finally flooded his brain as his eyes shot open as he stood up and shouted. Holy heck, I'm alive. Surprising everyone with his loud words, Izuku looked around and was scared when he saw the zero pointer laying in the edge of the city, completely destroyed. Was my punch this powerful? He asked himself, still unsure of how that happened. Are you alright? He heard a soft voice coming from behind him ask. Turning around, he saw the brunette kneeling next to him. It had caught him off guard, she was worried for him, she was worried for a total stranger, but she was there, waiting for an answer. With a bit hesitation, he replied. Yeah, I'm alright. Thank God. But are you alright? Wasn't your leg stuck on that debris? Izuku asked, still worried about the girl's well-being. Don't worry about it, I got stuck, but they didn't actually hurt me, but thanks for the help anyway, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. You're welcome I guess, I just could not let you get crushed like that. Izuku sighed. But, if you don't mind me asking, what did you do with that robot? That power was amazing. She asked, pointing to the destroyed machine. D that was my quirk, but I can't control it properly yet. Really it must be a very powerful quirk then. I'm sure once you control it you'll be an incredible hero. She exclaimed, looking really hyped up about it until she remembered something oh, how rude of me, I didn't even introduce myself, I'm Achako Yuraka, nice to meet you. Oh right, I'm Izuku Midoriya, and it is nice to meet you too. It happened in an uncommon way, but it happened, Izuku was having a real conversation with this girl, and he was happy about it, after everything that had occurred the least they could do was introduce themselves, and talk a little, and like that they stayed while recovery girl treated the other examinees, but this precious moment would not last long. Everyone who is still present, the battlefield will be closed in 5 minutes, please leave the area, so the pros can do the cleanup. Present Mick shouted, interrupting the conversation between the teens. Well then Izuku, let's go. Achako exclaimed, quickly getting back on her feet and offering a hand to the green-haired boy who accepted it happily. With a quick movement, Izuku was brought back to his feet as well and was ready to go back home until he took his first step. After attempting to start his walk, he felt his legs shake and lacked energy to keep his balance, falling straight to Achako's shoulder, who yelped in response. What happened? She asked. I don't know, I just can't move my body. Izuku answered with a blushing face due to the proximity, but is not like he could help himself. It's because I healed you. Recovery girl said, as she approached the teens who were caught by surprise. My quirk allows me to accelerate your healing process with a kiss at the cost of your energy, and since you just healed three broken limbs, it was expected that you would not be able to move for a while. She explained. But how long will it last? Izuku asked. I'm not sure why I'm still here. I'll need to run a few tests on you before I can say you're free to go so, if it is not much for you, could you please help me to take him to the infirmary, little missy? The heroine asked, pointing her cane to Achako. Of course. It's the least I can do. She answered. Then follow me. Recovery girl said, showing the path. It took a while but, after the tests, Izuku was free to go back home and see his mother, who was waiting for him and about to tear up, thinking the worst had happened. Still tired from the healing quirk, he went straight to his room and laid down on his bed, wondering what the aftermath of the exam would be. The next week flew by while the green-haired teen waited for his letter to discover what the result would be, although he had an idea of what it would be like. He had performed well in the written exam, but with zero points in the practical, he was sure he would not get in the course, and, even with all odds against him, he couldn't stop hoping that some miracle would happen and he would be accepted. By the end of the week, the letter had arrived. It was retrieved by his mother who had just returned from a grocery store and found the mailman on her way back. Right now, Izuku was sitting on the chair of his desk with the letter in front of him, trying to gather enough courage to open it and face the consequences. 
Full of anxiety and doubt, he grabbed the letter and ripped it open, letting a couple of papers and a small disc fall on the desk. The disc rolled a little until it stopped and started shining and forming a big image of All Might in front of his face. I'm here, as a projection he yelled, catching Izuku off guard. All Might. But I thought this was from the UA. It's been a while, young Midoriya. I'm sorry I wasn't able to contact you earlier, but anyway, the only reason I'm in this town is because I am going to teach it UA All Might said, as a small hand creeped from the side of the projection and signaled the no.1 hero to hurry up. What do you mean with get to the point? Whatever I want to say can be said later. Fine. He coughed and looked back at Izuku. Even if you passed the written exam, the zero you got at the practical exam would naturally result in failure, All Might said. The team knew this was coming, but it still hurt him. After all the time and sweat put into the training it was all for naught, he could not feel more pathetic until, but that's not the end of the story. As the teen looked up, he saw the hero holding a remote and pointing it to a nearby monitor, turning it on and showing the image of the girl he saved from the zero pointer. She was wearing what seemed to be her school uniform and was approaching present Mick in the middle of the hallway. Achako. What is she doing? Izuku asked himself, confused with why this was being shown to him. Excuse me she said, grabbing the hero's attention. She came to see us right after the test wanna know why pay attention. Do you remember one of the contestants, his name is Izuku Midori Achako said, catching the teen's attention. He was one who destroyed the zero pointer, so she took a little pause. I would like to share some of my points with him. Izuku was surprised by what she had just said, she wants to share points. But why? He questioned in his mind. I heard him say stuck in zero points earlier, so that means he did not get a single point, right? With that said, all dots had been connected in Izuku's mind. Please, let me give some of my points to him. He gave up on his chance to get in and risked his life just to save me. He deserves to get in more than anybody else. At this point, the boy was about to tear up. Had his actions really moved her he questioned himself over and over again, thinking his eyes were tricking him. You've acquired your quirk and moved others with your actions. What kind of hero course rejects someone who did the right thing? In this job, you risk your life and put your money where your mouth is. Turning back to the monitor, present Mick was now patting Achako's head as a way to stop her speech. I'm sorry, but I don't think we can share your points, but there shouldn't be a need for that, little listener. The hero said with a small smile on his face. In this exam, we weren't just judging with villain-based points, there were also rescue points. For you, Izuku Midoriya, 60 rescue points the green-haired now stood up, trying to pull himself together after such an amazing revelation. And while we're at it, 45 points for Ichako Yuraka, you're both in. Now come All Might said, thrusting his hand towards the young hero. This is your hero academia. It was all Izuku could think of. UA was the hero course with the lowest approval rate in the entire country, and he had passed. There was no word that could describe how happy he was and the amount of tears that he and his mother had shed together, but that did not matter what mattered was that Izuku was in. After the small celebration his mother had pulled off, the green-haired teen went straight to bed so he could have the best night of sleep in his entire life, but before he could lay on his bed, his phone rang. As he grabbed the device and turned it on, he saw a notification informing that All Might had messaged him. Congratulations for getting in, young Midoriya. The text said. Thanks, it was all because of you. Izuku replied. Nonsense. It was all because of your dedication and hard work. All Might texted. The team could imagine the man turning into his buff form while saying that. But without getting off topic, I would like to meet you tomorrow morning at the beach. I have something I'd like to discuss. Did something happen? Izuku asked, worried that something bad had happened to his idol. Do not worry, my boy, I just want to talk about one for all. Well then, tomorrow it is. The boy replied. Thank you, young Midoriya, but if you excuse me, I have to finish some paperwork. Have a good night. You too All Might. And with that, Izuku turned his cell phone off and laid on the bed, what is it that All Might wants to talk with me? He wondered. After a brief moment, the green-haired closed his eyes and slept, after all, now he had a reason to wake up early. All Might, I'm here. Izuku yelled as he saw the no.1 hero in his skinny form in the distance. The hero was taken back by the approach, even coughing a bit of blood. All Might where is he? A bystander said. Repeat after me. Just my eyes playing tricks on me. All Might ordered. Doing as told, Izuku repeated and managed to trick the bystanders and continued his conversation with his idol, who pulled a newspaper and gave it to the teen. When reading the paper, the green-haired boy was surprised by what was written. Mysterious well-doer cleans Dagaba Municipal Beach Park. You're becoming kind of famous my boy. Even got the first page of today's journal. All Might praised me as Izuku read the journal. But they don't know it was me. 
It just proves how noble you are. The cleaning the beach was your idea. Izuku said. I almost seemed like he was trying to negate the compliments. But it was you who did it, so please, stop putting yourself down like this. All Might said, giving the teen a small pat on the head. Now, changing the subject I want you to tell me, how was your experience on using one for all for the first time? It was different. Izuku replied, not sure of how to answer himself. But how did it feel? Well the teen said, taking a little pause trying to organize his thoughts. It felt like putting an egg in a microwave. He concluded. So unique. All Might yelled, surprised by how the teenager described using the sacred power. But why is it so important? The green-haired teen asked. That is why I asked you to come here today. I was watching the entrance exam along with the other teachers of UA, and I observed you using your new quirk very carefully, and, as I expected, you still have zero control over it, or you go for nothing or you go all out the hero explained, making Izuku feel a little bad about the reaction. So I am going to train you on how to control it before the UA starts. Those words surprised Izuku. All Might planned on teaching him on how to control a quirk that breaks him in use, just how is he going to do that? But how? We only have two weeks before it starts, and every time I use it I break myself, not only that, your schedule is very tight, as well, and we barely know how much power I. Slow down my boy. All Might interrupted his muttering spree, causing the teen to give a small yelp. Your questions are very easy to answer. Since you did the entrance exam, I've been doing my best to get as much free time as I can, and I managed to get these next two weeks completely free, aside from my three hours of hero work, he explained. And about the bone-breaking thing, do you remember the heroine that healed you? All Might asked. Yes I do. Her name was Recovery Girl. Well, she is a very close friend of mine, and knows about the secrets of One for All. I explained your situation to her, and she agreed to come help me on teaching you on how to control the quirk. He explained. Really, that's incredible. Izuku said, almost jumping out of pure joy. But listen carefully All Might said, catching his successor's attention. Even with help, your journey to control one for all will not be easy, so I want you to prepare yourself both mentally and physically. The pro exclaimed. I'll do my best. The teen yelled with a determined look in his eyes. Now that's a reaction I like to see. So get ready and meet me at UA tomorrow, at the same time, me and recovery girl will be waiting. Yes sir. And with that, both holders of one for all departed and continued with their daily activities, but Izuku only had one thing in mind. How was All Might going to train him with so little time? Well no matter what he was going to do, he would have his answers by tomorrow morning. It was around 8 in the morning, and Izuku was already at the train station, waiting for his ride to UA, and while he waited he texted All Might, making sure that everything was ready or that he wasn't too late, after all, he didn't want to leave his idol waiting. After the train ride, the freckled teen was now in front of UA gates, and walking towards the building. As he looked to the gates, he saw the no.1 hero, and the youthful heroine waving at him. Waving back, he compared the heights of both heroes that were in front of him. Recovery Girl was so small that she would need to get three times bigger than she already was to get an All Might size. It was almost funny. Good morning young Midoriya. All Might greeted as the team finally got close. Good morning. Izuku replied. So you really are the next holder of one for all huh? The Recovery Girl questioned, although she already knew the truth. From what I can remember, you have zero control over the quirk, don't you? Yeah Izuku said, lowering his head to talk to the elderly. We are going to have a lot of work then. Come on, let's not waste any more time and begin your training session. Please follow me. She said, entering the campus. Yes Mrs. Recovery Girl. Izuku yelled, following the pro heroes. Just call me Chiyo from now on. As they went deeper into the campus, they entered the same mock city that was used during the entrance exams. It was in the same conditions that it was left on, broken buildings and debris everywhere. Now in the middle of the city, All Might stopped and said. Okay, use one for all. Just like that. The green-haired asked, caught off guard by the pro's words. But of course. How are we going to train you if we don't know your limits? So please, show it to us. Use it on that building over there, it is almost completely destroyed anyway. The no.1 hero said, pointing towards the said building. Analyzing the building, what he had said was correct, the building looked like it could fall apart at any moment. Following the hero's orders, he took a step forward and pulled his fist back, letting the power flow through his muscles, and with a big swing, a giant blast of wind pressure was released, but instead of destroying just the broken building. The blast also destroyed a good chunk of the mock city, making the wind roar and lift a cloud of dust, both heroes covered their eyes, protecting them from the shockwave the attack had created. After a brief moment, the dust fell down, allowing the pros to see what the teen had caused and making their jaws drop in the process. 
That single attack had destroyed kilometers of the city, only leaving wreckage behind. Once recompassed, both heroes looked at the team, he had his right arm completely broken, the skin of the limb was in an extremely dark shade of red, and he was grunting in pain, almost falling to his knees. Amazing. He is even more powerful than me in my prime. All Might thought, completely taken back by the sheer power the teen had demonstrated. Not wasting time, both heroes rushed towards the broken teenager to help. Here, let me heal you. Recovery girl said, as she planted a kiss on the broken arm, healing it in an instant. D thanks. Izuku said. As the energy consumption finally hit the green-haired, he fell to his knees getting more worried looks from the adults. Quickly recompassing himself, Izuku flashed a thumbs up, signaling he was okay. I'm just not used to it. He explained. And you shouldn't. That's why we are here. All Might said, extending a hand to Izuku who gladly accepted it and got back on his feet. Well now that we know what you're fully capable of, we can start to think of ways to train you. Chio said, scratching the back of her head. And how are we going to do it? Izuku asked, still curious about what they were going to do. The pros looked at each other for a moment, almost reading the other's thoughts, they turned to the team, both wearing a serious expression. You are going to fight me? All Might said bluntly. What? Izuku shouted, completely surprised by how they wanted to train him. He had just earned his quirk, and now they wanted him to fight its original owner and current strongest hero, All Might himself. Are they crazy Izuku thought. Calm down, we're not asking you to fight him seriously, it can badly be considered a fight to be honest, recovery girl started. Since one for all is too powerful to be trained like other quirks, you'll be directing your attacks on me until you get used to a percentage of power that your body can withstand, and I will cancel your attacks, this way we can train you while bringing property damage to a minimum. All Might finished. But won't that be bad for you I mean, you can only stay in your hero form for 3 hours, not to mention your wound. Is this really a good idea? Izuku asked, worried about his idol's safety. It isn't good, but it seems to be the most effective way, and don't worry about my wound young Midoriya, your attacks may be strong, but I have survived being hit with a lot worse All Might said, as he took a step forward and started to generate steam. Now come, shall your training begin he said now in his buff form. I'll back off a little, one mistake coming from you too, and you can say goodbye to me. Chio said, as she created distance between her and the one for all users. But how am I supposed to control one for all? I have no idea on how Izuku asked. Remember when I asked you how one for all felt like? Yeah, I do like putting an egg in a microwave. Well remember that feeling and concentrate on it to make sure the egg doesn't blow up. Reduce the power and shorten cooking time until you feel comfortable with it and then hit me with all you got all might instructed while flexing his muscles to demonstrate sturdiness. Okay, I'll try, the introvert said as he pulled his fist back and let the power surge through it. The egg will not explode Izuku said in his mind, trying his hardest to concentrate. It will not, it will not. With a mantra being repeated in his mind, the teen felt the power in his body being reduced, and, feeling safe with the amount of power he had gathered, he threw a punch toward the no.1 hero but, as the fist was about to connect with the pro's body. The image of All Might's wound flashed in his mind, making him lose focus and let all the power flow through it again. Afraid of what the blast would cause, Izuku closed his eyes, but the movement continued. As his punch connected, the teen opened his eyes and saw that everything was all right, no destruction or broken limb. Once he looked up, he saw All Might, completely intact, holding a smile bigger than his normal one. That was an amazing young Midoriya. You managed to control it in the first attempt the hero said, as he pulled the teen into a tight hug. Izuku could not process what was happening for many different reasons, but the main ones were. The proximity he was having with his idol, and why the attack had not done damage. Of course, he was glad the attack had not hurt the man, but he felt the power slip through his grasp. How did it not cause as much destruction as before? He needed to know if All Might had the answer. Stop All Might. I did not control it. The introvert shouted, grabbing the hero's attention and making it put him back on the floor. What do you mean? You completely nailed it All Might praised, but Izuku was not convinced. No, I did not. I did feel the power getting weaker enough to control it, but before the attack I lost control and used it at full power again. He explained, confusing the buff man in front of him. So you're telling me that you used a 100% blast, but nothing happened the hero simplified. Yeah. He confirmed. But why did it not go full power then the no point one wondered as recovery girl approached, grabbing their attention. Maybe it was because you didn't want to hurt him, she theorized. You said you had lost control, didn't you? Yes I did. What passed through your mind that made you lose your focus? Izuku was taken back with her question, but he knew it was for the best. Clearing his throat and taking a deep breath, he answered. I remembered All Might's wound. 
I see so you were worried that your attack would hurt me all night concluded, now understanding what was going on. Then maybe, because you had no intention of attacking, your body automatically set a power limit for you, so you would not cause any damage to me the hero theorized, as all dots in his mind connected. Do you really think that is what happened? Izuku asked. Well, the previous holder of one for all said that the quirk had already shown some weird interactions with its holder, all might be explained. Like seeing the figures of the previous wielders and power variations, but she never said a thing about power limits. If she said it or not it does not matter, what matters is that we just found an easier way to make the boy control the quirk. Recovery girl said, interrupting the no point one seconds line of thought. You're right. Young Midoriya, let's try this again, channel one for all, and attack me just like you did before, but this time, try to focus on the power limit your body is using. It seems that that amount is perfect for you. Okay, I'll try. And with that they repeated the process, Izuku charged one for all in his fist, and attacked the symbol of peace, and just like before, he let the power flow freely before it connected, and, just like before, the attack didn't deal the full power damage or break the green-haired teen's arm, but it was still stronger than a normal punch. They repeated the process a couple of times until they were sure that their theories were correct. After the third attempt, All Might asked the boy to stop, and went back to his skinny form to relax a little. So I was right, one for all is creating a limit, so you don't hurt anyone unintentionally. The symbol of peace concluded, sitting on the floor. Did you get the feeling of the power limit, kid? The recovery girl asked, curious if they had made any progress. Yeah, I think I do. And how much is it? The no point one hero asked. Well compared to a 100% blast, I would say my limit is 5%. The introvert concluded, looking a little sad about it. 5%. That's amazing my boy. All Might praised him. But it is almost nothing, how can it be so good? Izuku asked, confused with his idol's happiness. Do you think that someone that just got a tail would be able to do incredible tricks with it right off the bat? All Might asked, receiving a head shake from his successor. My master told me that most holders of one for all were only able to use 1% when they first controlled it. Even me, who managed to reach 100% almost instantly could only use 1% at first, so for you to be able to use 5% right now really is some good news. The pro concluded, flashing a grin towards the teen. But don't get so happy about it. Recovery girl exclaimed, grabbing Izuku's attention once again. Even if you can use 5%, your control still needs a lot of training, or else you may lose focus and release a full blast on someone. But of course, this will come with time. That's why we will keep training every day. All Might said, getting back on his feet and extending a hand toward his successor. But for now I think you had enough. Come back here tomorrow and we'll try to make your control more precise. We'll be waiting. Yes sir. Izuku exclaimed, grabbing the pro's hand and shaking it happily. After their goodbyes, Izuku went back home and continued his day normally. Of course, his mother swarmed him with questions like. Where were you? What were you doing? And lots of are you hurt? The teen answered them with all honesty could, but kept some details in secret since he was asked to not tell anyone about the training sessions. By the end of the day, the introvert was more tired than normal. It must be because of recovery girl's quirk. He concluded. Now laid down in his bed, Izuku stared at his hand, thinking of ways to better control the sacred power that he was chosen to wield, but, as the exhaustion kicked in, the teen turned to the side and closed his eyes so he could get his such deserved night of sleep. The next two weeks flew by. Every morning, the green-haired teen would have breakfast and go straight to UA to continue his training. In the first three days, the pros trained him on keeping the power under his safe zone, the next seven, they trained him to spread the power through his entire body, so he could have freedom in his moves, the ability he called full cowl, and in the remaining days, they taught him battle basics that he did not have access to, since he was deemed quirkless, but after all this time. After all the hard work, Izuku was ready. Now finishing to tie his tie, or whatever he was trying to do, the team proceeded to lace his red shoes and open the door. Wait, Izuku. He heard his mother call him. As he turned around, he saw her observing him in his new uniform that was composed of a gray coat with yellow buttons and some green stripes, a red tie, and a black trousers. With a big smile and teary eyes, Inko looked at her son one last time and said. You look great. Seeing his mother's happiness, Izuku smiled back and passed through the door. I'm off. Izuku questioned himself over and over again on his way to the mention school. Being honest, he was both excited and terrified on the idea of his first day in the new school. This is the UA that we're talking about, the hardest hero course in all of Japan. Just thinking of the giant piles of homework that he would have to do was enough to give him shivers. But it's not like a bit of paperwork was going to stop him. 
He was on his way to become the hero he always wanted to be, and not even five All Mights would be enough to make him give up, after all, he still had to keep his promise to the girl he met years ago. Now inside of the train, Izuku started to think about her. I wonder how she is doing the introvert thought, curious if she even remembers the promise. So much time has passed since their encounter that he would not blame her if she did forget, but he still wanted to know. Is she okay? Is she trying to become a hero like she said? How does she look like after all these years? All these questions were inside his mind for the entire ride, not giving the green-haired teen a single moment of peace. It took a while, but the train reached its destination. After getting out of the station and walking a bit, Izuku was now in front of the UA gates alongside the hundreds of students that also attended the course. My journey to become a hero begins now. Izuku thought while taking his first step and entering the mass of students that were walking through the gates. As Izuku got closer to the building, the more his mind filled itself with insecurities, but, as he finally entered the school, something different grabbed his attention. It was hard to identify what it was, but something of a sky blue color moved in the distance. The introvert was caught off guard, but, after seeing the color that marked his childhood, all of his insecurities were replaced with happiness. Taking a moment to recompose himself, Izuku started moving again, now filled with determination. The green-haired teen moved through the hallway searching for his classroom, but the school was so big that he was having difficulties trying to find it. 1A, 1A where is the classroom Izuku said, as he ran through the corridor. Aha! I found it! Izuku exclaimed, as he stood in front of the giant door with 1A written in the wood. Why is this so big? He wondered, getting a little curious. With a deep breath, Izuku grabbed the door and slowly slid it open. I hope I'm not in the same class as Kakin or that guy with glasses. Izuku begged, remembering the things those two had done to make him so afraid of them. Once the door was open, Izuku took a peek inside, and the first thing he saw was enough to make him regret waking up today. Itsuki was sitting at his desk, with his right foot on top of it, as he yelled to the guy with glasses, who seemed to be trying to correct Bakugu's behavior. Please take your foot off the desk. Such action is insulting to the ones who came before us and the craftsmen who built it. The blue-haired teen said, waving his hands in a robotic way. Like I care. Now tell me, four eyes what middle school are you from? Katsuki shouted in return. I'm from Samei Private Academy, and my name is Tenya Iida. The teen responded, only to make the explosive teen's grin get even bigger. Samei huh? Aren't you a fucking elite? I'll be more than happy to blow you to bits. Katsuki said, challenging the glassed kid. Blow me to bits, are you really aiming to become a hero with this attitude Tenya said, taken back by the boy's response. As Katsuki was about to give another one of his disrespectful answers, both teens stopped at the sound of the door being opened, and the green-haired teen got inside of the classroom. Turning around and looking at the origin of the sound, Tenya was surprised to see the teen he had repressed in the entrance exam in the school's uniform, not because he didn't want him to be here, but because he did not expect them to be in the same classroom. Walking towards the newcomer, who took a step back at the sudden approach, Tenyu extended his hand and welcomed the new student. Hello, I'm from Samei Private. I heard you before. Izuku said, cutting the boy with glasses in the middle of his sentence. Tenyu right. I'm Izuku Midoriya, it is a pleasure to meet you. He continued, now grabbing and shaking the extended hand. I see it is a pleasure to meet you too. Tenya said, returning the shake with his own. Midori I must say, you discovered the true nature of the exam while I did not, I misjudged you. You truly were the superior candidate. The blue-haired teen said, lowering his head in disappointment with himself. You mean the rescue points? Izuku asked. I did not discover anything. I only acted on impulse, I just couldn't let that girl get. That curly hair you're Izuku right? A soft voice said, coming from behind the introvert. When he turned around, he yelped in surprise at what was standing in front of him. Achako Yuraka, the girl he saved from the zero-pointer, now in UAS uniform, being full of joy and giving the most heartwarming smile Izuku had ever seen. So you got in too. I'm so happy, I thought I wasn't going to see you again. Achako said, as she slowly approached her savior. Are really Izuku questioned, he just couldn't accept the fact that this cute girl wanted to see him again. Well, thank you for what you did before. You tried to share points with me. I'm really happy because of it. Izuku said, trying to stop stuttering, but it was of no use. How do you know that? Achako questioned, confused on how the boy discovered what she had attempted to do. 
While all the scene was occurring, Katsuki stared at Izuku from afar, remembering the day they were called to the principal's office to be congratulated. After discovering that the introvert had got in the hero course just like he did, he became really angry and, with help of his friends, he dragged Izuku to the rooftop, where he started his interrogation but, different from all the times the explosive team tossed the green-haired around, Izuku fought back, leaving Katsuki wordless. After that day, they did not see each other again, which gave the blonde enough time to understand what had happened. Someone helped you to get here, didn't you? He wondered, trying to understand the introvert's sudden boost of confidence. Humming back to the savior, and the saved. I'm so excited. I wonder what our entrance ceremony and guidance sessions will be like. Do you feel the saw? If you came here to socialize then get out of my way. A cold voice coming from behind the teenagers interrupted the brunette. As the teens looked at whatever said that, they were surprised after spotting a person with a dead-looking face inside of a yellow sleeping bag, laying on the floor, and drinking a small box of orange juice in one sip. No one knew how to react to that, except for Katsuki, who did not care. After a moment, the man left his sleeping bag, revealing his appearance. He was tall, with a badly shaved beard and sunken eyes, wearing a black long-sleeved shirt, black pants, and a scarf composed of multiple gray strings. My name is Shota Asawa, and I'm your homeroom teacher. He introduced himself. As the man identified himself, everyone rushed to their respective seats, but it was for naught, since once everyone was in their chairs, the man pulled out gym uniforms from his sleeping bag, gave one to each student, and ordered everyone to meet him at the training grounds. After changing and going to where they were instructed to, everyone was surprised by what the teacher had in mind. The test of arc works. All students said in unison. But what about the entrance ceremony? Achako asked, as her hopes were cut short. There's no need for these futilities in a hero course. Asawa said coldly. You're training to become heroes, people that put their lives on the line to save others, wasting time like that is simply irrational. Now let's stop chit-chatting Katsuki Bakugu, take a step forward, and enter the circle. The homeroom teacher demanded, pointing to the softball throwing area. Doing as ordered, Katsuki entered the circle and grabbed the ball that was tossed at him. How far could you throw the ball in middle school? The dead-looking man asked. 67 meters. He replied. Well then try that again, this time you can use your quirk. Following the teacher's instructions, Katsuki threw the ball with a big swing, using a powerful explosion to propel it even further than normal, shouting what seemed to be his battle cry. Die. As the ball flew up in the sky, everyone watched, surprised by the amount of power that the team demonstrated. Izuku, on the other hand, looked at the team with no expression at all. I he said, surprised by the word Katsuki had chosen to motivate himself. Once the sphere hit the ground, Asawa pulled a device from his pocket and showed the distance the ball had flown to the class, whose jaw dropped at the big number that was written. 705 meters that's insane. A boy with spiky red hair said. Knowing your limits, Asawa started. That's the first step to discover what type of hero you're going to be. All of you are going to do the same exercises that you did in middle school, using your quirk to maximize your efficiency, after it is done, your scores will be compared and ranked to see who did the best and who did the worst. Whoa. This is going to be fun. Yelled a girl with pink skin and horns. Fun you say Asawa said with a voice that warned the students that something bad is going to happen. If you're thinking that the next three years will be filled with fun and games, I have something for you here it comes. A student with the lowest score will be deemed hopeless and expelled from this school. Asawa said, freezing everyone in place. Expelled on our first day you can't do that. Exclaimed a small boy with purple balls instead of hair. And who said that? The homeroom teacher responded, shutting the boy's mouth in an instant. Here in the UA. The teachers have freedom to educate their students in whatever way they deem more efficient. This also includes expelling anyone we judge is not suited for the job. So I can, and I will expel the lowest score. He continued, sending shivers through the majority of the students. Now let's begin the tests, I want to see what you're truly capable of. Asawa exclaimed. But those words said, Izuku began to shake, he didn't know what anyone there could do. What if he ended up with the lowest score? No, he would not let that happen. He won't toss all the training he did with All Might and Recovery Girl in the trash he was going to pass, and he would do anything in his reach to do so. As they completed the tests, Izuku started to feel more comfortable with his results. Thanks to training sessions he had in the last two weeks, he was capable of using one for all without damaging himself, which made this test feel like a refreshing breeze. Thanks to the speed increase, Izuku was capable of finishing in third on the 50-meter dash, only below Katsuki and Tenya. In the grip strength test, he managed to finish in second, scoring an amazing 105 kilograms, and standing below Mizo Shoji, who was capable of lifting 540 kilograms, that guy was a gorilla. 
on the standing long jump, once again, he got third place, losing to Tsayu and Katsuki, who practically flew over the training ground. Now he was ready to throw his softball for the fourth test. As he pushed his arm back, letting one for all flow through his body. While in the middle of the movement, he felt the power shut itself down, making his throw become an average human's one. 62 meters. The machine said, making Izuku flinch. What? He questioned, even though he knew he would not get a response. I'm sure I used it. What happened? I cancelled your quirk. Said Asawa in an angry tone. As he turned to his teacher, he started to understand what had happened. The man had his eyes shining in a red tone with his scarf and his hair levitating in response to his quirk while he got closer to the teen. While observing his teacher's sudden transformation, Izuku spotted a pair of yellow goggles that were right where the scarf used to be, connecting the dots, the teen said. You're the Erasure Hero, Eraserhead. You it is true that you're doing well in the tests, but I want to see your full potential. He exclaimed, increasing his tone of voice. What do you mean? I'm giving it my all. Izuku defended himself, but was interrupted, as the teacher's scarf wrapped itself around the one-for-all wielder and dragged him closer to the Erasure Hero, forcing him to be face-to-face -face with the man. Are you really? He started in the entrance exam all the results you got with your current power is nothing compared to what you did. Are you really going to hold back? What if, because you refused to use your full power, someone's life was taken away? Are you really going to afford taking that risk? Asawa asked, challenging the teen's ideals. Of course not. Izuku replied. Then show me what you can really do, or else I'll give you an instant zero in all the tests and expel you. He threatened, making Izuku flinch in fear. Eraser head scarf and hair came back to normal as he deactivated his quirk to let the green haired retry. You are free to use your quirk again. Do not make me angry. He threatened the teen again. Standing in the middle of the circle, the green haired started to evaluate his options. If he didn't follow his orders he would be expelled, and if he did follow them, he would become incapacitated and unable to continue, which would also expel him, because he would not be able to get more points and stay in the competition. He didn't know what to do. In the middle of the students, Achako, Ida and Katsuki discussed what had just happened, although Katsuki's way of interpretation was a bit surprising. What do you think Asawa said? Asked Achako, who was unable to understand what the man had said to her friend. I don't know, but it looked like he was scolding him about something, said Tenya, who was in the same situation as the round-cheeked girl. He said that UA isn't a place for a quirkless loser and ordered him to give up, that's what he said. Katsuki exclaimed, surprising both teens beside him. Quirkless have you seen what he did in the entrance exam, there's no way he doesn't have a quirk. Tenya said, surprised by what the blonde had exclaimed. Don't fuck with me. He is just a quirkless loser that cheated to get in. He responded, still believing that he was right. Have you ever paid attention to what he did in these tests? The boy with glasses said, not believing in the blonde stubbornness. Back to our introvert. He had already decided what to do, he didn't have another choice. It was something he had never tried before, but it was his only option. Pulling his arm back once again, Izuku let 100% of his power flow through it and motioned to throw the ball. The world seemed to slow down for him at that moment. Slowly, he saw the ball move along with him and, as it was about to leave his grasp, the teen moved all the energy that was concentrated in his arm to his index finger, shooting the ball high in the sky, creating an enormous shockwave, and lifting a cloud of dust in the process, and forcing everyone to cover their eyes, as the wind roared around them. Just how much power this brat possesses? Wondered Asawa, who was also protecting his vision. Is this enough for you? Izuku asked. His voice was filled with determination. As the dust fell down, every student's jaw dropped with the state the training ground was. Izuku was standing in the middle of where the circle once was, and around him there was only shattered ground. His index finger was broken, and its skin was completely destroyed, but he didn't seem to mind the pain. Deep everyone heard the device make a noise inside of the teacher's pocket, bringing them back to reality. As Asawa took the device out and looked at the number that was written in it, the machine that also informed how far the ball traveled beeped as well and said the distance the ball had flown. 4,115 meters. It said. Everyone's jaw dropped even harder than before, not only had he scored multiple times more than Bakugou, but also because he seemed to be just a shy dork with an average strength enhancement quirk. Of course, Achako and Tenya weren't as surprised as her classmates since they had already witnessed it once, but this felt even more powerful than before. Tell me, teacher Asawa Izuku said, turning his head toward the pro hero. Is this enough for you? He asked again, making the erasure hero grin in return. This boy is going to drive me nuts. He exclaimed. This is more than enough congratulations kid. You did something I though no one here would do. You exceeded my expectations. 
After hearing those words, Izuku wore off his determined expression and fell on his butt. He didn't pass out, but the energy he had used to throw that bowl was many times higher than what he could endure. Breathing heavily, Izuku looked at the state his finger was in, there was blood all over it, and his skin looked like a burnt rag. If I had used any more power I would have blown it out of my hand. He realized, as he lifted his head to stare at the sky. It was that color again. The same color that he associated with one of the best moments of his life. Just remembering those moments made him forget about the enormous pain his finger was making he feel, but, sadly enough, that moment of peace didn't last long. What the hell was that Deku Katsuki shouted, dashing towards the green-haired teen at full speed, while using his explosions to boost him forward. Izuku was frightened, but he was so exhausted that he didn't even try to get out of the blonde's way. Just, as he was about to release an explosion in the middle of the freckled teen's face, strings of Asawa's scarf wrapped themselves around him and pulled the blonde towards the teacher, stopping the explosive kid from getting any closer. He still tried to release the blast, but nothing came out of his hands, confirming that his quirk was cancelled. Stop making me use my quirk, it gives me a dry eye. The pro shouted, putting even more force on his pull. Understanding that he would get nowhere, Katsuki stopped resisting and relaxed his body. Noticing the boy's actions, Asawa deactivated his quirk and let go of the teen. Now, both of you, get back to the group, we'll be going to another area to perform the next test. Asawa instructed, walking toward the area he mentioned. Doing as ordered, both boys rushed to the group of students, although Izuku still had difficulties moving. And while the introvert was being praised by his amazing demonstration of strength, Katsuki watched from afar, repeating these words inside his head countless times. He is just a pebble in my path. He is below me. The remaining tests were difficult to pull off. Because of the broken finger and the energy he had used, his results could not be compared to the ones he got before. His stamina had been cut in half after all, but that did not stop him. He kept pressing on until he had done all of them and, to his delight, it had paid off. Once everyone had completed their tasks, Asawa used the device to create a hologram that showed the ranking of the students, and Izuku's name was above anyone else's standing proudly in first place. But he had to admit, once the teacher said that the lowest score would not be expelled, he got really angry. I almost lost a finger because of a simple lie. The green-haired teen yelled in his mind, blaming himself for not being smart enough to notice. But there was something else that needed our attention. From afar and through the campus's wall, a cartoon-like face observed the first years for quite a while, even catching Izuku's display of power, and, as the newcomers left the training grounds, the mysterious face sank in the wall, completely disappearing. Inside of the said building, this tall teenager removed his face from the wall. He was wearing a UAS uniform, proving that he was a student. He was very muscular, even though his clothes didn't allow anyone to notice it easily, and had blonde hair arranged in a well-made cowlick. After taking a deep breath, the student started moving, directing himself to the third year's classroom. As he opened the door and placed the bathroom pass back in its original spot, although it was immediately removed from the spot so it could be used once again, he walked back to his seat where he was greeted with a timid voice that apparently was trying to mock him. Welcome back Mirio. Was your trip to the bathroom paradise exciting? The voice said, even though it was stuttering more than it wanted. Oh, this is a new Tamaki. Trying to improve your social skills. I've never seen you mock someone before. Mirio replied in a playful manner, wiggling his eyebrows to show that he had also made a joke. Hey, don't do this to me. It was her idea. Tamaki defended himself, pointing to the girl sitting by his left. Okay, I admit it was my idea. The feminine voice declared, putting her hand in the air like she was being arrested. But not getting out of topic what happened that you took so long? She asked, getting excited to receive her response. Oh my Ire, your curiosity has no limits. Mirio laughed while sitting in his chair. Well all I can say right now is he smirked. We're going to have a lot of fun messing around with the first years. Odd, I'm so tired, sighed Izuku, as he walked away from the school on his way back home. After everything that happened that day, Izuku felt like he could drop dead on the floor at any moment. Not only did he use an overcharge one for all smash that almost ripped his finger from his body, but he also had been affected by a recovery girl's quirk, which drained all the stamina he had left. As he tiredly walked toward the gates, the introvert felt a very familiar hand touch his left shoulder. How's your finger? Tenya asked, making the green-haired yelp in surprise. Oh, hi Tenya. It is okay now, thanks to the recovery girl. He explained. I see I'm glad nothing happened. The boy with glasses said in relief. I was really worried, your finger looked pretty bad. It's okay now, I promise. Wow, I thought Tenya was scary, but he is actually a very nice person Izuku thought, realizing he had misjudged the boy by his side. 
but sure fooled us today making us think that is each one for itself at the top the blue haired exclaimed, rethinking what had happened this morning. To think that our instructor would deceive us like. Hey, you two. Wait up. They heard this soft voice call them. Turning around, both teens saw Chaco waving and running in their direction. You two are going to the train station right? She asked, panting lightly. Oh, hello infinity girl. Tenya greeted, using her score at the softball test to call her. Call me a Chaco. She corrected, changing her focus to the introvert. Is your finger better, Deku? She asked, unaware of what she had just called him. Deku why are you saying that? Izuku asked, confused on how she discovered his childhood nickname. Well in the softball throw that Bakugo boy called you, I thought it was your nickname. She explained, surprised with his reaction. You see Kakin says that, as a way to call me useless. He explained, waving his arm awkwardly. The derogatory pet name Tenya concluded. Oh sorry. She apologized, bowing her head. But I kinda like it, you know Deku to me sounds like do your best. She explained, pumping her fist upwards. Hi, I'm Deku. Izuku yelled with his face, as red as a tomato, getting confused looks from his friends. But Izuku, it is an insult, isn't it? Tenya questioned trying to understand the boy's actions. It's okay if she uses it that way I don't mind. Izuku explained. Achako smiled at the teen, noticing that he had created an exception just for her. Now together, the trio made their way to the train station, chatting about the day, and now in his home, the green-haired continued his daily routine, eating his meals, and starting his workout. When everything was done, Izuku rushed to his bed so he could have his deserved rest. I will need as much rest as I can get for tomorrow. He said in his head, falling asleep shortly after. Everyone was now in their seats, waiting for the no.1 hero to arrive so they could start their day. After a morning of normal classes and a relaxing lunch, all students were starving for some action to the point where they could badly hold their doubts to themselves, but, after all that time waiting, their hopes were answered. I am coming through the door like a normal person all might boomed, as he did the opposite of what he had said. Everyone was amazed, except for Kitsuki, who just shrugged at the hero's entrance. They were really going to have classes with the strongest hero in the world, it was like their dreams were becoming reality. It is time for young ones the pro started. The class that will put you through the situations that every hero deals with hero basic training. It is also the class that gives the most credits he added. And today we'll have a combat training class All Might announced, showing the confirmation from the principal to give the mentioned class. And to do so, you need to be looking good the hero said, pressing a button on the remote he took out from somewhere unknown. As the button was pressed, the wall on the left side of the room started to move, revealing wallets with numbers 1 to 20 written on their surface. Once all students grabbed their respective wallets, All Might continued his speech. All of your costumes were designed based on the quirk registry and the special requests you gave us before the course started. So wear your costumes and head toward Ground Beta. Yes sir, the class exclaimed in unison. Now coming through Ground Beta's gates, most first-year students stood proudly in front of the No.1 while wearing their hero costume, but, as All Might counted the students to see if he was allowed to proceed, he noticed that one of them was missing. Wait for me. A voice coming from the gates requested. After a moment, the owner of the voice revealed its appearance. I was Izuku now wearing his costume which was composed of a dark green jumpsuit with black vertical stripes by the sides of his body, elbow, shoulder, and knee pads, a pair of white and thick gloves, a white mask, his trademark red boots, a red utility belt, and a hood, with a pair of what seemed to be bunny ears. I'm sorry. I made you guys wait. Izuku apologized as he bowed to his idol. There is nothing to be sorry about, young Midoriya the pro said, comforting his successor. Now let's start the battle training the pro began, pointing to a nearby building. What we'll be doing today is a simple indoor personnel mock battle the hero affirmed, now guiding everyone to the building he had shown. Most of the villain battles occur outdoors, but the most heinous ones tend to appear inside buildings, so you'll be trained to deal with them in these situations. There will be two teams, the heroes and the villains. The villains are hiding a powerful weapon, and the heroes were sent here to take care of it. What are the winning conditions? Asked a girl with a big and spiky ponytail. The heroes must capture the villains or secure the weapon, while the villains must have to protect the weapon or take down the heroes All Might answered, now pulling two boxes from a nearby corner. And to choose the teams, we'll be drawing lots, now let the battle training begin. But that said, all teams picked a ball from the boxes the hero had pulled out, and the teams that were formed goes, as follows. Aizuku and Ichako. B. Shadow and Mizo. C. Momo and Minoru. B. Katsuki and Tenya. B. Mina and Yuga. F. Jiru and Denki. G. Rikudo and Koji. H. Tsaiu and Fumikage. I. Mashirao and Turu. Gajiro and Hanta. Pei Deku. 
it seems that fate has chosen us again. Achako exclaimed with a big smile on her face. Yeah, it sure did. He agreed while trying to hide his face. Once she called him, he managed to get a good look on her costume, and it made his mind drift in various directions. She was in a black skin tight bodysuit that had a vertical pink stripe crossing the middle of it, had pink bracelets, and utility belt, big pink high heels, and a helmet similar to recovery girls, but this one's visor was bigger and curved. Just looking at her made him blush wildly. Okay everyone, let's see who will face who All Might yelled, as he pulled one ball from inside two other boxes he pulled out from somewhere else, one had the word hero written on it, and the other one had the word villain. Taking his hands out of the boxes, and revealing the teams that were going to face each other, all students shivered. Team A, as heroes, and Team D, as the villains. This could only lead to chaos. Looking at each other, both Katsuki and Izuku shared a challenging expression towards one another. It was time to settle their differences. I'm going to love kicking your ass Deku. Katsuki shouted, making small explosions pop on his palm. We'll see about that, Kakin. Izuku replied, feeling more determined than ever. Okay you two, let's hold the battle for once you're inside the building All Might said, opening the door of the building where the fight would happen. The villains go inside first, the heroes stay here, and wait for my signal. Me, and the class will be watching you from the watchtower. And with that, the no.1 hero and the rest of the class walk towards the watchtower, leaving the four fighters behind. Good luck, Izuku, Achako. Tenya said before being dragged by the collar of his suit into the building. Don't waste time with them, four eyes. They're the enemy now. Katsuki ordered, pulling the armored team. As the villains disappeared from the hero's sight, Achako turned the introvert and asked. Do you have a plan? Okay heroes, it's time to start the training. Your battle starts now All Might announced through the speakers. With a determined nod, both heroes entered the building, as the timer started ticking. While venturing the building, the teens looked at every corner that they passed, trying to not get caught off guard. Now taking the stairs to the second floor, they discussed what way of action was more viable, but, when walking through the main hallway, Katsuki jumped from the corner with his right arm pulled back, ready to unleash an explosion. In reflex, Izuku, with his mask now on, activated full cowl, and jumped back, taking Achako with him, making both heroes dodge the assault. Nice dodge, Deku. Katsuki said, as he moved out of the smoke his blast created. I knew you would come for me. I was already expecting it. Izuku explained, lifting himself from the floor. Then you're already prepared to have your ass kicked. The blonde exclaimed while charging for another attack. In a blur of movement, Izuku appeared below Katsuki and threw the best punch he could get directly at the explosive teen's gut. Sending him flying to the other side of the hallway, bouncing on the floor a couple of times. I did not expect him to be that fast. Katsuki though, trying to understand what had just happened, and shooting a threatening look toward the one for all wielder, but Izuku did not flinch. The green haired teen just stared at the explosive teen with a threatening look of his own, remembering his conversation with Achako before the training started. Are you okay, Deku? You're sweating a lot. She asked, concerned if her partner was feeling well. I'm alright. Just a bit nervous. He explained while trying to recompose himself. Well then, what do you think they're going to do? I don't know about Tenya, but Kakin will come straight towards me. Do you really think so? She asked, not sure if his line of thought was correct. We've known each other since we were kids, and he still can't accept the fact that I'm here at UA with him Izuku started, now looking to the floor. But that doesn't concern me his confidence, his strength, his quirky is superior than me in all these ways. Deku Achako said, surprised with the honesty her friend was having. But that will not stop me. It is only driving me forward he exclaimed. Today I'll prove to Kakin that I'm not the weak kitty once bullied. Tension filled the air, the only thing that could be heard were the sparks that Izuku's full cow was creating. Now in his battle stance, the hero wannabe began his speech. You always start your assaults with a powerful right swing I've seen, and felt it enough time to know this the teen said through his mask. But this time around I won't let you toss me around like I'm your punching bag. I'll prove to you that Deku means do your best Izuku shouted, getting a happy smile from Achako and an angry look from Katsuki. You're shitting your pants and still want to tell me this crap you're pissing me off the blonde shouted in return. What's happening down there? Answer me Katsuki. Tenya demanded through the blonde's communicator. Just shut up and keep watching the weapon. I'm about to clean the floor with someone's face. The explosive teen shouted in response while grabbing the communicator, tossing it to the wall and breaking it. So Tenya is protecting the weapon, Izuku thought, trying to formulate a plan. Let's see what you're capable of. Katsuki challenged, using explosives to shoot himself towards the green-haired teen. With another right arm swing, the explosive teen attacked, only to have Izuku dodging the attack with his speed, leaving a trail of energy where he passed. 
Though Ichako, I'll hold him off. Izuku ordered, getting a confirming nod from the female, who started to make her way up in the building. Watch out for yourself. Again, the blonde shouted, directing a left leg kick on the green hero's head. In reaction, Izuku rolled to the side, dodging the attack and creating distance between them. Stop dodging and face me. Katsuki ordered, charging once again. In a blur of movement, Izuku was in front of Katsuki releasing a punch directed to the teen's face, who blocked it with his gauntlets, but even blocking, the impact still passed through, sending him deeper in the hallway. How did he get so strong? The villain wondered, quickly getting back on his feet. But Izuku would not give him time to think. In another blur, the green teenager dashed, aiming a roundhouse kick in the blonde's torso, but he missed, as Katsuki used an explosion to fly over him and, with both of his hands, release a powerful blast on the introvert's back, damaging his costume and making him fall on his knees. Not wasting time, Katsuki grabbed Izuku by the arm and threw him on a nearby wall with another explosion that destroyed the wall like it was nothing. Quickly regaining his focus, Izuku got back up and charged a blonde, aiming a punch in his head. In the watchtower, all students watched the battle in awe as the rivals clashed. They were toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not giving a single second of rest to the other in the middle of many punches and explosions. They're amazing. It's like they've been waiting their entire lives to fight each other. Exclaimed Rikido. That's manly, as heck. Ijiro said. Looks like our training sessions are paying off. Thought All Might, amazed by how viciously his successor was fighting. But the hero team is still at a disadvantage when Fumikage starts. They do not know where the weapon is, and if they keep fighting like that they'll run out of time. That's how it's supposed to be. In real situations you won't always be on equal terms with the opponent, that's why they need to work together to win the exercise. Right now, young Izuku is holding back young Katsuki, so Miss Achako can find the weapon the pro explained, receiving confirming nods from his students. But you have to admit they're really fired up. Kayoka said while rolling one of her long earlobes. Yes they are fired up. Both teams were thrown away from each other as a result of their last clash. Their breathing was heavy, their arms and legs were aching from the pain of constant impacts, and it felt like one of them could drop dead on the floor at any- You got a hell lot stronger Deku, I gotta give you that. Katsuki said, slowly lifting his right arm. He wasn't charging at him, but that single move already put Izuku on edge. He was really tired, and Katsuki wasn't holding back, if this continued for much longer he would lose for sure. Deku I found the weapon, but Tenya is protecting it Achako whispered through the communicator, surprising the green hero. That's great. Wait for my cue, I'll be there soon. Izuku said, making Katsuki even angrier. So round face found the weapon that means I have to kill you right now. The blonde declared, now with his arm extended toward the introvert. That also means that I can't keep wasting time with you, Kakin. The hero said while increasing the energy that flowed through his right arm. That's what we'll see. As you probably know, my quirk makes me sweat a nitroglycerin-like liquid from my hands, and these gauntlets that I'm wearing have been storing it since the beginning of the exercise. Katsuki explained while pulling a switch of his equipment, revealing a pin that was hidden inside of it. Izuku began to sweat. He knew where Katsuki was going, and it would not end pretty well. You better dodge if you don't want to die. The explosive teen said, yanking the pin and triggering the device. In the same moment, the device released a massive blast that destroyed anything that was in its path but, thanks to the knockback it caused, Katsuki missed, sending the blast a bit to the side and only grazing the green hero, but it still damaged him badly. As the blast flew through the hallway, Izuku could feel his arm being shattered while his costume was being destroyed. After the attack died out, only a cloud of dust and smoke was left, stopping everyone at the watchtower from seeing what was happening. Weakly, Izuku tried to lift himself from the floor, his costume had its top right half completely burned, his mask was broken in half and had fallen on the floor, and his right arm was broken, and putting any weight on it made Izuku feel like he was being tortured. Haha this is even better than what I had expected. Katsuki shouted while slowly walking toward the broken teenager, ignoring the smoke in his path. Is that even allowed Izuku asked in his mind, afraid of the intentions of his childhood friend. Deku are you alright, I only heard an explosion then Ichako asked, trying her best not to alert Tenya, but stopped due to the introvert's response. Change of plans try to capture the weapon, I don't know if I'll be able to help you, Izuku informed her, now back on his feet. But what about you? I'll be fine. Just win for us. He exclaimed, ending the transmission. Still worried about a round face you'll die if you don't start paying attention. Katsuki shouted while charging at the green hero. Izuku tried to get out of the way, but he was too weak to move fast enough and ended up being hit with a full power explosion in the face, making him lose all the sense of reality he had. 
In another quick move, the explosive team grabbed the introvert's arm and, using multiple explosions to gather enough power, threw Izuku on what was left of the wall, making him grunt in pain. You're below me. Katsuki shouted as Izuku tried to lift himself from the floor. The green hero was both broken and confused, his head was spinning, and just moving in general hurt him, but he couldn't give up, he had to keep going. Back on his feet once again, Izuku analyzed his surroundings looking for something that could help him, and, for his luck, there was something he could use. Looking above, the green-haired spotted a part of the ceiling that seemed unstable, any force applied on it would be enough to make it fall. While Kitsuki sprinted towards him, he energized his left arm with one for all, and hit the wall behind him, causing a chain reaction, and making parts of the ceiling fall, creating more dust, and stopping the explosive teen's assault. Using it to his advantage, Izuku merged himself with a cloud of dust, completely disappearing and doing his best to remain unnoticed. Itsuki, on the other hand, became angry with his rival strategy. Is he planning to run away? He thought while looking around, trying to find his opponent. As he searched, the blonde found something moving towards him and, in reflex, released an explosion on whatever it was, but, as the cloud of dust around it disappeared due to the force, Katsuki froze. He had exploded a piece of wreckage from the broken ceiling, meaning that Izuku had used it as bait and he had fallen for it. Making his worries bigger, he heard a loud sound coming from behind him. Now desperate, Katsuki turned around, trying to stop whatever was coming, and was hit with full force by the green hero's left fist. I will not lose to you. Izuku roared, spinning his body to finish his attack. 15%, Detroit Smash. He announced, as he threw the blonde into the floor, releasing a powerful gust that cleared all smoke around them and shook the entire building. Back on the top floor, Tenya was surprised by the sudden tremors the building was having, while he desperately tried to communicate with his partner. Katsuki, answer me. What is happening? He shouted at the communicator, but got no response. Now behind the weapon, Achako slowly got closer to it, trying her best not to get the villain's attention. I don't like this strategy or know what's happening down there, but this isn't just for me Deku is doing his best, I can't let him down. Achako thought, now in front of the weapon. With a quick movement, the brunette wrapped her arms around the machine of destruction, letting out a relaxed sight and getting Tenya's attention. Weapon retrieved. Sh no. The armored team shouted, disappointed with himself. In the watchtower, everyone jaw dropped when Kitsuki released that blast from his gauntlet and kept alert once the smoke cloud covered the cameras, and like that they stayed, silence filled the room until a powerful gust cleared the camera's vision, allowing them to see the victorious Izuku standing on top of the defeated Kitsuki, who was unconscious. On another camera, they saw Achako, holding the weapon between her arms. All Might, after seeing the results, pulled the microphone close to his mouth and declared. Hero Team Wee. In unison, all students from Class A cheered with screams and applause as the match reached its conclusion. But before they could continue celebrating, Izuku began to shake. The hero stood there, confident, doing his best not to fall on his back in case the opponent got back up, but after hearing the announcement from his idol through the communicator, he felt at ease. I did it was all Izuku could think of as he saw the unconscious body of his rival lying on the floor. After all these years being tossed around and receiving countless insults, he had finally proved to himself and to everyone that he wasn't useless, that he could win that he could reach his dreams. There was no reason to stand up anymore. As he began to flinch, Izuku relaxed his body and let it fall backwards, but instead of feeling the hard cold floor, he felt a pair of strong arms embrace him, preventing him from hitting the ground. Slowly turning his head around, he saw All Might, holding a smile bigger than his usual one, muttering the words. Well done, young Izuku. And with those words inside his head, Izuku passed out. When all students were back in the watchtower, and Izuku and Kitsuki were taken to Recovery Girl for medical assistance, the class began analyzing the match. So, after everything is said and done who do you think was the MVP of this dispute All Might asked, as he noticed Momo raise her hand. It's Ichako Yuraka, teacher All Might. She announced, getting surprised looks from the students around her. Me? But I did nothing other than sneak up on the weapon. Achako exclaimed, unsure of why she was being praised. And because of that, you managed to win the match. The girl started. It's true that the battle between Izuku and Kitsuki was impressive, but it was driven from personal matters and caused too much damage to the building, if Kitsuki were to use another blast like that, the building would have collapsed for sure. And Tenya was too distracted with the fight happening below him that he did not pay attention to your sneak attack, if he had stayed calm and paid attention to his surroundings, he could have abused of his speed to make sure that you would not touch the weapon, and you, on the other hand, stayed calm, even with the chaos that was being unleashed below you, and stuck to the plan. After her speech, the girl received dozens of amazed looks, even from All Might himself. 
She explained it better than I could ever hope to. He thought, surprised by the girl's analytical power. Well said, young Momo. But just to complete your analysis if young Katsuki didn't broke his communicator, he could have warned Tenya of Achako's approach, furthermore stopping her sneak attack, and young Izuku let his guard open many different times, if he were to be in a real fight, he could have been killed in one of those openings All Might added. Thanks for sharing your opinion with us. Momo thanked, although she was the one who had said everything. Okay everyone. Now that this is out of the way let's continue our exercise All Might declared while pulling two balls from the hero and villain boxes. Once all battles had been finished, the students were released and allowed to go back to their houses. All Might, doing his job, went to the principal's office and gave him the recording of each battle he had organized and, shortly after, directed himself to Recovery Girl's office to see if his successor was alright. With the video files in his hands, the principal copied it, now having two discs that contained the footage. After getting off his chair, which was way too big for his size, he walked towards the third year's classroom and knocked on the door. After a brief moment, the pro hero and third year homeroom teacher Snipe opened the door, revealing the small animal and school principal to the class. I'm sorry for the interruption, but I would like to give this video file to Mario, Tamaki, and Ajire. The principal said, giving the disc to the homeroom teacher. Of course, Principal Nedzu. The pro hero answered, saying goodbye to his superior and turning back to his class. You heard the man, come grab the files. Snipe ordered, making Mirio get up from his seat and take the disc from his hand. Back on his seat, Mirio turned to his side and received an awkward smile from Tamaki and a curious look from Najire. Are these the battle videos from the first years? She asked, letting her curiosity take over once again. After all, we were tasked to help them in their rescue training next week. Mirio said while carefully putting the disc inside his bag. Then let's watch it together after class, it will be fun. What do say Tamaki? Najira asked, smiling towards the boy by her side. Sure, as long as only the three of us go he muttered, earning confirming nods from his friends. It settled then. After class, meet me at the dining hall so we can analyze these. Mirio said, waving his arms in an excited way. I know you're the big three and all. But would you please stop talking and pay attention to the class? Snipe asked, although everyone knew what he truly meant. Sorry teacher Snipe. The trio said in unison as they went back to their school activities. Now in the dining room, all members of the big three were sitting at one of the many tables in the dining room while Mirio placed a disc in his computer so they could analyze the students that they would teach next week. Clicking on the first file, the trio watched a camera footage of the battle between a teen with green clothes and a blonde with grenade gauntlets. I see that this Katsuki kid can secrete nitroglycerin from his hands. A very powerful quirk indeed. Tamaki affirmed with Mirio nodding in agreement. It's true that he has a powerful quirk, but his ego is way too big and he apparently can't hold his personal grudges. Mirio added while trying to symbolize just how big Katsuki's ego was with a movement of his arms. What do you think about this, Najire? When both boys looked at her, they were surprised to see that the girl wasn't even paying attention to their conversation. She was just staring at the computer and observing the green hero while he was victorious on top of his unconscious opponent. Najire. Are you even listening? Tamaki asked, although the girl seemed to ignore him. Countless questions were inside the Blunette's mind, what is his quirk? How did he knock the boy out? Why is his hair so curly? But the one that appeared the most, and the one that made her look at him the way she was, never left her head even for a moment. Why does he look so familiar? Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.